In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now call to mind our sin. And we apologize to God, saying together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Recla, Amy Recla, Lucas Balanjit, Eric Lopez, Norma Gaspar, Felicissima Castro, Kelly Tapacho, Zaid Zafo, Michael Mello, Carmen Pace, Matthew Vacari, Felina Quattro Chalki, Dennis Mark Rogers, Norman George Pitcher, Teresa Oligario, Madeline Lee, Benal Fernandez, Chris Jane Gabon, Benjamin DeMello Kearns, Lugaba, Laura, Sarah DeMello, Maria Lilia Tien, Sapajico Trabado Jr., Arias Magali, Santino DeVito, Irma Barrico, Isabel Martins, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C., Jesse, Nora Watson, Charles Popol, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Kiana Tran, Alex Tardici, Laura Fortadis, Michael A., Gloria Matthias, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Agnes Vu, Luis Medeiros, Rolando Monacal, Ruth Padon, Feli Canlis, Peter Kajaloff, Andrew Maniz, Eduardo Morales, Mercedes Fagan, Luigi Berardi. For the intentions of Benny Garces, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Joachim and Bertie Alfonso, Lilia Aquino, John, all souls in purgatory. On this feast of St. Lawrence, we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray, O God, giver of that ardor of love for you, by which St. Lawrence was outstandingly faithful in service and glorious in martyrdom, grant that we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, they scatter abroad, they give to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. God, who supplies seed to the sower, and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Be Happy the merciful who give to those in need. Happy are those who fear the Lord. 
who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Happy, merciful, who give to those in need. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. They will be remembered forever. Happy, merciful, who give to those in need. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. In the end, they will look, look in triumph on their foes. Happy, Happy and merciful who give to those. They have distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their name is exalted in honor. Happy the merciful who give to those in need. Alleluia, alleluia. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. My brothers and sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We live in the first world, and being in the first world, it's very easy to take so many things for granted that we forget the blessings that God has given us to be able to speak out about anything pretty much that we want to. Yesterday I talked about evangelizing during the summer. Canada has a very short summer, uh, and it's important that we use the time to evangelize. But we have to also be aware that we live in the first world, and more and more as our religious values are detaching from the Canadian values, from the secular values, evangelizing becomes complicated. Um, a lot of people are very uncomfortable, and I spoke a little about this yesterday, very uncomfortable with anyone bringing up the topic of religion in any context. Um, I mentioned yesterday mentioning a movie um, as opposed to Jesus Christ or religion or Catholicism. But those are buzzwords, those are triggering words that can get people very upset. And so it's better to talk about, for example, on our t-shirts, the formula for joy, Jesus first, other second, yourself last. Using things like that can be an evangelization tool that helps you to get in the door without the person slamming the door shut and no longer listening to you. I've had many, many, many um, grandparents uh, come to me uh, over the last 25 years of priesthood, pretty much, and saying to me, you know, as soon as I start talking to my grandchildren, they roll their eyes, not again. Um, and it's important that we recognize it's no different than marketing. If one approach is not working, to keep repeating that approach is not going to be successful. You need a different approach. And so we need, in a deep way, um, to recognize that in the gospel reading today, in the first reading, the sowing of seeds um, may not always fall on good ground, but eventually, because that's the common theme between the two readings, is the idea of the seeds. It's important that we plant the seed on good ground and that in a deep way we work hard to assess how is the ground? Is it ready for the seed? Is the person ready 
uh, for a spiritual dialogue. Um, again, I mentioned baptism class yesterday. Uh, this is where I try to assess, you know, where are these people? Have they had a negative experience with religion? Where are they in the process? Why are they baptizing their children? Uh, it's important that we assess the ground uh, first uh, before we start throwing seed. Um, it's important that we do a ground assessment, that we do an analysis of with, what is the ground like. And in a deep way, um, this is step one when it comes to understanding where people are in the spiritual journey because different people are in different places. You can't cookie cutter evangelize assuming that everybody's in the same place. And you have to be very, very careful um, because people will just throw terms, you know, I was baptized Catholic, I'm a practicing Catholic, I believe in the Lord Jesus, or they'll say some words like that. And I've learned over the years not to trust that their definition is the same as my definition. And so I ask follow-up questions um, to define terms. What do you mean by practicing? What do you mean by Jesus Christ? Uh, what do you mean, um, you know, what do you mean? Um, and have them explain what they mean. And most of the time, it doesn't link to what I understand the word as. And so this opens up an opportunity to expand these people, to help them to see things in a different light. Because as I've mentioned to you many times, um, I do not trust that when somebody uses the word Jesus, it's the same version that I know. You can't trust that anymore today. Once, you might have been able to, but no longer. So, again, you have to be very careful in how you deal with people today when they use terms like Catholic or Jesus or practicing. Um, you have to be very careful, and you have to be very aware of this, because if you're not, you can do a lot of harm um, in terms of evangelizing in a way that doesn't make sense to them because their definitions are different than yours. Um, important uh, that we do these things um, because a lot of people today aren't aware. They, they work on either a cultural faith or a superstitious faith or a faith that is not based on the biblical Jesus. Uh, but it's based on a different one, their family, their Catholic school, uh, what their priest taught them, uh, which may not be in line uh, just because somebody went through the system, and I've said this to you many times, just because somebody got pumped through the system of sacraments or school or whatever does not mean that they got it. It means that they went through it, but not necessarily that something went ding-ding. Um, that it kind of reached them, that they got it. Uh, I deal with this all the time as a Catholic priest, um, that what they got is not in line with him. Uh, it's in line with a different version of him. And so, again, please be careful uh, when you evangelize this summer. Uh, I hope that you do, um, but be careful. Uh, in being smart and wise and cunning and shrewd in when you're dealing with people today. Uh, because as I've said many times in my baptism classes, if you ask 500 Catholics to define the term practicing Catholic in Canada, you're probably going to get 500 different definitions because everybody has their own definition of practice. Uh, that's part of the problem with the baptismal promise because it mentions that the parents promise to raise this child in the practice of the faith. But you can't trust that their definition of practice is the Catholic definition of practice, and maybe their definition of practice. Um, so again, be very aware of these things. Um, and if you are, then you'll be much better at kind of maneuvering how to reach the person so that the seed that you're planting falls on good ground as opposed to rocky ground, thorny ground, whatever ground, um, the bad ground, where it's never going to grow, like it's never going to grow, um, because ultimately um, they weren't ready. So again, you kind of have to prepare the ground. I don't know if any of you plant, 
Uh, but if you don't prepare the ground and you just throw seed, it's never going to work. You got to till the ground. You got to, you know, put manure on the ground. You have to, you know, stir the ground, get it ready uh, to plant the seed. Otherwise, you might as well just throw it on rock and hope that something grows. Uh, it's not going to work. So, again, important to use that time to work on the ground before you put seed on the ground, making sure that the ground is ready uh, for it. Um, I deal with people all the time in this respect, that's what I deal with most of my time, is getting that ground ready, understanding where they are, um, that in a deep way they can learn uh, from what I'm about to say. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, I've had so many circumstances like this, where they've just been malformed. I think I told you this story once. Uh, it's happened a number of times in my priesthood, especially using the acronym Jesus First. Um, my culture is Italian, and family is very big in my culture, as it is in many cultures. But in my culture, it's like really big. And... Um, and uh, they get confused uh, because they think that family comes first, um, not Jesus. And I many times have had to correct Italians uh, in terms of family as a means, but not the end. Uh, you can't treat family like an end. It's a means to Jesus, means to faith, but it's not the end. And unfortunately, the way many people have been raised, family is the means and the end. And I frequently have to correct them and say, no, 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 no. The family is a means to Jesus, but is not replacing Jesus. You know, because a lot of times I've had young people, Father, family is first. Um, yeah, it might be the first means, but it's not the first, first him. Um, so again, careful, because a lot of times uh, people are confused. Many Catholics are confused. Uh, and many times because they've been badly taught, um, you know, within the family, uh, or they've become confused themselves um, in terms of what the last generation would have, you know, taught. Uh, I've many times been challenged, do you think you know my grandfather better than me? I, um, yes, yes I do. I may not have the familial connection, uh, but do I know that generation better than you? <laughs> yes, I do. After 1900 funerals plus, oh yeah, I know that generation better than you. After being raised by that generation, I think I know that generation better than you. You know, they're like 14, 16, 18 years old, and um, they think they know. So, again, it's important not to offend them, but at the same time, to teach them in terms of what they know and what they don't know. You're basically trying to give them some wisdom, you know, which today is very much lacking because they know how to use the internet. And because they think they know how to use the internet, they think they know everything. Hey, you know, I, I, I know. Um, you may know, but you lack wisdom. Um, but I agree, you know a lot of stuff, uh, but you lack wisdom. So, um, again, evangelize. Careful, though, uh, because there's a lot of confusion out there today. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this one, I am able to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offering we joyfully make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they may become a help to our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Lawrence, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we now acclaim, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, and especially Joachim and Bertie Alfonso, Lilia, Queen Old John, all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, especially St. Lawrence, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other now. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Mm -hmm. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ for eternity pray. Bring you to everlasting life. You three, two masses in a row. I'm very impressed. If, every, if everybody had grandparents like yours, I'd be unemployed. Sometimes it's that simple. You know, kids are on summer holidays. I have five elementary schools. I hardly see any children at the day mass. I got a couple of them who just haven't been evangelized. But like, you know, a lot of grandparents are taking care of their grandchildren. They could very easily bring them here. They just don't get it. Again, we have to help them. Let us pray. Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that the same homage of dutiful service which we render on the Feast of St. Lawrence may bring us an increase of your saving grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all. Have a lovely day.